Genesis Church. Good morning. We are so happy to have you joining us today. Um, you are either in-house watching us right now or you're watching us from Genesis TV, Facebook Live, or YouTube Live. And we want you to know that we have a team waiting to hear from you. We want to know who you are. We want to know where you're watching from. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. And all of that information is available right here. So we need you to click, like, comment, share. Let us know all about you. Our team is waiting to hear from you. And if you're in-house and you need prayer, we want you to know that our prayer team is circulating through the campus right now. You'll see it on their shirts. They have prayer cards that you can write down your prayer requests and your praise reports. And you can drop that in the box that we do the tithing with and or hand it back to our prayer, um, our prayer team. They're also here ready to pray with you right now if you need some prayer right now. So we want you to know that we are a church that believes in the power of prayer and we want to utilize that to the best of all of our abilities. So yes, pray it up. Well, today is exciting. We are in week two of the never ending story, a year long examination of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And our guest speaker is the one, you may not know him, but we love him. Pastor Johannes from Germany is here to spread the word. I can promise you, it's gonna be fire. So settle in and get ready for what Johannes is gonna be bringing because he's gonna be bringing the heat today. And as always, we have a ton of things going on here at Genesis Church. This Tuesday, January 10th, Genesis Night is back, baby. Sloppy Joe's is on the menu, and we want you to know we need your help. Don't look around and go, somebody else is going to do it. No, 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 no. We need you. We need all of you. Make up a tray of Sloppy Joe's. Grab a couple of hoagie rolls. Come on down and serve the hungry and homeless of our city with me and our peeps at Straight Street, okay? It's a great event, and if you've never been, this is something you're not gonna wanna miss out on. Honestly, we do this once a month. We go out, we serve. Straight Street does this five nights a week, all right? We're asking for your participation once a month, and we promise you, I say it over and over again, a lot of times, the blessing is yours, those of you who come to serve. So put it on your calendar. Make a point of it, and if you're able and willing, we want to see you out there. That's January 10th. All the details and registration on the What's Happening page at GenesisChurchOrlando.com. And you know what else is coming up? Anniversary Sunday. We're celebrating 13 years of Genesis Church on January 22nd. It's a day you're not going to want to miss. We've got child dedications going on, and we've got in-house baptisms going on. And so listen, if you want to be baptized, on Anniversary Sunday, a day you won't forget, then we need you to head over to the What's Happening page. You'll see a little graphic there. Anniversary Sunday baptisms. We need you to register today, okay? Because January 15th, we'll be doing our splash classes after each service. But you need to register in order to be able to attend that. And you need to attend that class in order to be baptized. We all following the same page? All right, perfect. Next up, Creative Arts. We want you to know, from camera, to sound, to slides, to even our online team. The Creative Arts Workshop is something you're not gonna wanna miss. This is our third installment of Creative Arts Workshop. It has been invaluable to the Creative Arts team. And if you are part of the team, or want to be part of the team, then you need to head over again to the What's Happening page at GenesisChurchOrlando.com and register for the Creative Arts Workshop beginning February 19th. All right, that was a lot. So now I'm gonna quiet down a little bit. I'm gonna take it a little easy because we want you to prepare your hearts, prepare your minds as we begin to open God's word, but start off with some worship. So the band is queuing up. We want you to be ready because Genesis Church begins in five, four, three, two, one.
Genesis Church. We're so excited to have you guys joining us here today. How many are excited to be in the house of God? Whether you're in-house or online, thank you for joining us. Let's put those hands together and let's thank our God for he is worthy of the praise. Come on. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. Bag of bones. I tried with all my might, but I just can't win this fight. I'm slowly drifting. This bag of bones. Just when I
seated as we continue on service.
Well, good morning. Welcome to Genesis Church, everybody. We'll try that one more time. Welcome to Genesis Church, everybody. Would you welcome everybody watching online? If you're on Facebook, YouTube, or website, we're so glad that you stopped in to join us wherever you're at today. Make sure that you check in with our online hosts all throughout the service. Today, you're in for a treat, and the video you just saw has a lot to do with that because of your generosity. At the end of 2022, as we talked about finishing strong, we gave a gift offering above and beyond what we normally give in our tithes and offering, and we said, listen, if you do that, it is going to allow us to do what we do so well, be extra generous, not only locally, but around the world. And back in May, you were part of something generous where you were giving money to help our Germany church who were bringing refugee women from the Ukrainian border into their church, into their home, into their families, away from everything. They had lost it all. And so back in November, when Chad and I had the chance to go visit Germany, we got to meet the 14 women in their church, uh, some of them young, some of them old, some of them have been pulled away from their children, some of them have been pulled away from their mothers. And we just said, listen, because of their first Christmas, out of their country, away from everything, as a gift from Genesis Church, would you do an extra special Christmas dinner, Christmas gifts, and just love on these refugee women? And so that video was just a snapshot of the pictures and video that uh, Pastor Johannes brought over with him just for you to catch a glimpse because as we always say, you give through a church, you don't give to a church. And so your giving is making a difference, not just here in our city, but it's making a difference around the world. And at Christmas time, you got to be part of something special, just loving on some women that have lost everything because of the war in Ukraine. This morning, Pastor Johannes is with us. And the beauty of that is, is really the heartbeat of this church. Since we started it, I've told you, we are gonna go to the world because the Bible tells us go into all the world and make disciples. And some of you will never be able to travel to some of the countries that we visit. And so it is gonna be my job and my pleasure to bring those countries to us. And so this morning you get to hear from Pastor Johannes. And the beauty of it is that as we were planning this, even months ago while we were in Germany, I said, listen, beginning in 2023, we're just going to do something we've never done before. We're going to march through the Bible together from beginning to end, starting January 1st. And so we won't hit every chapter, we won't hit every story in the Bible, but we're going to go through the scope of God's story. And we started last week in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. And we're going to end in Revelation at the end of this year and, and see the beauty of this never-ending story of God you're invited into. And I said, I want you to come, and it'll be the second week, and I already know it's Genesis 3. And when we open up the story of God and we read Genesis 1 and we read Genesis 2, and we see this God who creates everything, and he says, it is tov in the Hebrew language. It is not only good, it is a masterpiece that has been done, well done. He puts it in place and he puts it in order because he spoke into the chaos, the emptiness and the void and out of it, he brought forth life. We see this all illuminating power of God. And it's this illuminating power of God that pushes the darkness back. And yet here we are in just the third chapter of God's story and darkness shows up again. And the reason it shows up is because it is human beings that bring disorder back into God's ordered creation. We often choose our own path because we want to be creator of our own life. And because of it, we find ourselves in sin. And sin brings chaos, and it brings emptiness, and it brings void, and it brings darkness. And it will consume you, and it will destroy you. That's its intention. And this morning, you get to hear his Pastor Johannes in his broken English. Uh, I apologize for anything said the wrong way today. <laughs> people say, how do you find people so much like you? I don't know. I mean, God just dropped a German in from our laps uh, uh, five years ago. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful friendship and brotherhood. And he's been in my house since Tuesday. And I was in his house in Germany. And God has just continued to strengthen this relationship. But we're about to sing a song because we believe worship is a heart opener. It opens our heart and prepares it 
for we're about to receive from God's word as God reveals himself to us through it. And this word, this song is just the blessing and it's become, you know, known and it's become familiar and it's some people's favorite and it's a priestly prayer, a blessing being prayed over the people of Israel and it's all about God shining his face upon us. And in the scripture, for God to shine his face upon you meant that he was looking at you and he was enjoying what he was seeing. And so he was blessing it because it was being done the way he intended. He ordered it. He created it. And he would shine his face on you. So the prayer would be, God, never stop shining your face on me. However, anytime we step into sin, God cannot look upon sin. And so God has to turn his face from us. He had to turn his face from his very son on the cross. It is why he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you turned your face from me? God cannot be where sin is. And this is the catch this morning. There are too many of us that think that as followers of Jesus, we can also be in the presence of sin. And God cannot shine his face on that place. And so I invite you this morning to bow your head and close your eyes and to prepare your heart to ask in prayer, Father, is there anything in my life, is there anything in my marriage, is there anything in my home, is there anything as I lead my business and my career as a student, as I walk through my schools, that I am doing I am engaged with, I am clicking on, I am involved with in my dating relationship that you would turn your face from because it is not of you, it is sin. And this morning, would you reveal that to me? And would you give me the understanding to remove that? Because my prayer is that you would shine your face upon me everywhere I go. Father, today, our deepest desire is that the God who hovers over the chaos, over the waters of the deep, and he speaks and he creates and he illuminates and he pushes back the darkness, that God, our God, would shine his face upon us. That if there's anything in our life, in our homes, in this church, that would cause you to turn your face from us. We would remove it. We would repent of it. We would seek forgiveness from it. And we would be changed, Lord God, and live differently apart from it. Today, through Pastor Johannes, Holy Spirit of God, do what none of us can do. Change hearts, change minds. May salvation come to people today. May healing come to people today. Through the power of the name of Jesus, amen. If you could stand with us here today. Let's exalt his name. Thank you.
like you and you're in this place and you are moving with power and authority today father let your seed be in good 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 soil let it fall on good soil tonight today this morning we ask you this father God today glorify yourself in Jesus name we pray amen 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 you may be seated as we continue service
Guten Morgen. Can you hear me? Yes. Good, it's great. Thank you that I can stay, I stay here. Um, I'm from Germany, you know, you, maybe you hear my accent. <laughs> I'm not fluent this way, sorry for, for the stuff. Um, just, for me, it's just an honor to be here. I'm so thankful that um, I can speak something to you. And the most thing what I do today is I speak <coughs> about my problems. Maybe you can join in and say maybe you have the same problems, but I want to speak with you today about sin. But before we go to this part, what is sin, um, you know, I was 14 years old, a very beautiful, handsome child, um, <laughs> without a beard, unfortunately, but still beautiful. And, you know, I like to fish. I like uh, bass fishing, pike fishing. Who likes fishing here? Great. God bless you. I saw your hands. Great. Awesome. You know, I come from a family. It was very, my family is um, very poor. I'm the youngest and the, the most uh, handsome from the whole family. <laughs> and I just li I like fishing tools. But we, I go with my, with my friend of mine. We want to um, fishing shop where we can buy fishing tools, bass stuff, um, all the tools what you need. And I saw something for the bass fishing, but I saw I have no, muff, not, no money at all. And I, start, I talked with myself, I started to talk with myself, I said, hey, you need this stuff, but you have no money, what do you have to do? And then I negotiating with myself and greed wins every time. And I stole it. I stole all the stuff and it was just, it was horrible, you know, my pockets was full. And then I take, I saw one rod, this was a great rod, and I put, put, put her in, in my leg, you know, and I go away from this, from some shop like I have a stiff leg, like this one. <laughs> and when I was at home, it was, I had a so bad conscience because I raised up in a Christian family and I know this was a sin. And I thought this rod is cursed, you know. I never used it, but I sell it and make money, sorry for it. <laughs> and some years later, I was a pastor already, um, the Holy Spirit talks to me and says, Hey, Johannes, you have to go to this place and you have to fix it. Yeah, yeah. And I went away to this place and the lady showed up. I say, Hey, I have to speak with the boss. She, I am the boss. And I say, Hey, for 14 years or 15 years, I stole something here. And I have to confess it. She said, Are you crazy? <laughs> and... I explained to her that I'm crazy with other words. I said, I'm a Christian and I'm a pastor right now. And she get it. She said, you are crazy. <laughs> you know, in Germany, we say sin to something what is nice, what looks beautiful. We say to good food or to food what makes you really f uh, fast fed or with so much sugar, we say to this sin. Everything what tastes good, what looks good, we say in Germany, this is a sin because we just like it. And for me, it's today, I want to speak with you, what is a sin? And we, go in a, we, went to go, we want to go in a, in a part of the Bible where it's very important, where they speak about the sin. But before we speak about the sin, I want to say, in Germany, we have two levels of sin. And we see it here on the, on the screen right now. We have, one, the power of sin over the man. What does it mean? We have death, we have illnesses, and we have bad thoughts. God, don't save us from this. We have this problem on this earth. When Jesus comes the next time, he will step, stop death, illnesses, and bad, uh, bad thoughts. And we have the other thing, what God saved us from, is from uh, participating of sin by man. What does it mean? Your behavior. If you're stingy, or if you're, you punch somebody, or you steal stuff, or you're just a bad person. That's why we have two levels of sin. And we, I want to speak with you about the level of sin from this one. And before we go in this scripture, it's very important in Greek. You can't say that you have feelings. That like, I have fear. In Greek, it's not possible to say I have fear. Every time, the fear has me. It's different. It's like you have an opinion. Never. The opinion has you. You know, in Germany, we have, we have one part for against vaccination, another part for uh, vaccination. That you can't discuss. They have not an opportunity or an opinion. The opi opinion, they have the guys and the people. 
And the same what we have with sin. You don't have sin. Sin have you. And this is a problem. We, we, we start to fight against sin, but the sin, she, they catch us, and then we are in sin. Wow. Can I see the scripture first? Is it possible? Yes. Before we go to the scripture, we will see there is a snake. And the Bible used the, the, the word sin the first time by Cain and Abel. In Genesis 3, they never use the word sin. But the Bible used sin many times as an animal. If you see it by Cain and Abel, there is a lion on your door. He watching you. This is sin. It's like a lie. He will catch you. In Genesis 3, there is a serpent, a snake. But why a snake? And I will speak about it. Why a snake? Why the Bible use the picture of a snake for sin? You know, a snake is cold, but if the sun is shining, then the, sun, the snake gets warm and shines very fast. You can't catch it anymore, but it's very hot. It's the same as with sin. If, you are, if it's your life very hot, then it's, the sin is very fast. If you have problems in your life, the sin show up, it's very fast, and you can't catch it. The, the snake hides everywhere. You can see a snake in water, in the mountain, in the fields, in the houses, in your car, in the palace. Snakes are everywhere. And the same what we have with sin. Sin is everywhere. And special sin or snakes, they, in the ancient scriptures, if you see it or read it, the old uh, ancient scriptures, they see that the women, they fight against snakes the most because the women work in the fields, the most of them. The, the men don't work on the fields, good old days. And you know what I want to say is, the, the other problem is with women and snakes, a snake can change their skin. And the snake is then beautiful again, young again. And the woman can't do this just with makeup. You know what I mean? And the same is with sin. Sin show up if you work on a field, if you work in your office, the sin show up. And the sin is every time beautiful. It changes your skin, sometimes look like this, sometimes like this. You say, wow, this is amazing. This is why the Bible uses the picture of sin. And the most important thing is a lion, if he bites you, he tear an arm up or your head or a bear. You catch here, you are immediately dead. But a snake just bites you, put a little poison in you, and you think, oh, it's not a big deal, go, go away. But step by step, you will die. And sin is the same problem if you steal a rod, say, oh, not a big deal, it's a rich guy, just some, some fishing tools. But step by step, you will die. And this is why the Bible uses this picture of a snake to explain what snakes or what sin do in our life. This is why we go, no, the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Because the snake can do everything. It's everywhere. It's hide everywhere. <coughs> he said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat for any tree in the garden? And here we see what sin actually do. Sin changes the name of God, your relationship to God. Every time in the scripture you see God, Lord, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Elohim. The whole time in Genesis 3, Genesis 2, every time Yahweh Elohim. But right now, the snakes show up, just God. The name Yahweh means a friend, a brother, Somebody who have in your eyes, he rescues you. Yes, he saved you. He is with you the whole time. But the snake said, hey, just that's God. Just God. They lose this point, the word. And what, what's happened here is the sin changes the relationship from you to God. In Germany, we say, what is the sin? In Greek 
on Hebrew, in Hebrew means chet. Chet means something, you have a goal, what you have to achieve, but you don't hit the goal. Like, for example, I want to go to Wendy's and buy a triple with bacon. <laughs> this is a blessing, okay? <laughs> but if Tim break, break me up as a car and bring me to a, brought me to a vegan restaurant, this is a sin, <laughs> you know? And what I want to say is, if you don't hit the target, or you don't have your goal, what you want to achieve, then it's a sin. And we have the problem in Germany, I know you're so much holier and better than we are, but the people, they are changed from sin on the view of God. Sometimes they think just, it's just God. But it's not the Lord God. What I want to say is, people, one guy showed up some, one month ago, in my office for counseling. And he said, God, don't answer me or my prayers. Um, when I'm, die, die, I'm death, I have, I have questions to God. Then he have to answer me. You're an idiot. Shut up. <laughs> you know, if you read in the Bible, the Lord's Prayer, it's about your will be done, not my will be done, your will be done. And the problem is, if you have sin in your life, it's changed you. Amen. And why we pray? We pray not that I want to get what I want. I say, please, change my mind. Change my thoughts. I want to be like you. I want to suffer like you. I want to be like you. I want to be your idol. I want to be like you, Jesus. Change me. And this is the problem what we have with sin. That the people think... God have to do something for them. Wow. So much reaction in Germany, we don't have it. <laughs> in this crazy stuff right now, just one word is changed. Everything else is good. It's, it's, we say in Germany, how you catch rats. You don't give them poison. You give them good food with a little bit poison. And then you catch them. And we have the same with sin. This is why the Bible don't speak about sin in this verse. It's just show picture how sin work. Can I have the next scripture? There's written, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat from off the fruits of the trees in the garden. The next one. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit or tree that is in the middle of the garden. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. First of thing is, when the sin showed up, the sin said, just prohibition. You can't not eat. But when God created Adam and Eve, he said, you can eat from everything. All trees are allowed to. Just one is not allowed. But the snake, the sin, changed it. You know, this remembers on my youth. My parents said, you don't have to have Instagram, Snapchat. You can't go to the party. For me, it's nothing allowed. I hate my parents. Maybe you read about this problem. In, German, in America, it's different, I know. <laughs> you know, you have so holy people, I know it. And what one thing changed, I forget everything. That I have a house, I pay for everything, everything that I said, I'm stupid, I forget everything. Just I'm good, and my parents are bad. And the same thing what we have is right now here. If the sh sin showed up, they give prohibition, and the people die on it. In Germany, when, we, when I speak with people on the streets, they said to me sometimes, I don't believe in God, I'm an atheist. I said, in this God you don't believe, I don't believe either. Because you have a picture of God like a bearded man, old, bearded is good, it's graceful, but a bearded <laughs> man, he's an old guy, sitting in the heaven and just prohibitions. But this is a sin. The sin have prohibitions. God said you can take everyone. Just one thing now. And this God you don't believe, I don't believe either. For me, it's the most important stuff is when that Eve, she makes some mistakes. The first is she used also just God. The snake came up, a little bit poison. She hear it and start to work step by step. Okay? She just said, just God too. It's changed already. She has a different view already to God. And she do, did two mistakes. The theologians said, we have two mistakes here. First is, 
if Adam and Eve, they eat themselves full, like what God said, you can eat everything what you want, then the snakes show up and she said, hey, I'm good. I just saw full, I get it, I don't want them anymore. But she don't did it, and he don't did it, in this way, the, the sin showed up. So much time in marriage counseling, I see the same stuff. They don't have time to, to each other, they have no sexual relationship to each other, and then a guy or a woman showed up and they fell to sin because they're hungry, because they don't do what is allowed to. And the hardest thing what Eve do is, my wife will kill me, but she do it the same time every time. She exaggerating. <laughs> she said, it's not allowed to eat and not to touch, but God never said about touching, just not to eat it. And some people said, the snakes showed up and touched the fruit and said, oh, you see, nothing happens. And this is why we happen with religious people in churches. They have rules, they make more rules, more rules, more rules. It's changed the point of view from God. It's just prohibition, 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 like the snake. And then they're deaf. And this is why the Bible uses this picture from a snake. They don't use the word snake because uh, because not, not the word sin they use the snake because the picture of snake is so much bigger than the word sin yes. and if you hear right now and you know that you never have sin sin has you then it's in this way you know you have a snake a beautiful one it's not from the LGBTQ I'm so sorry but my daughter has just this one. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm a German. I'm too, too stingy to buy something new. <laughs> you know, when, when the sin showed up, you think sometimes, God is so bad, prohibitions. I have to do something for good. We have a rhyme in Germany. We say, come in and burn out. Our church motto, come in and burn out. Because you have to do so much, you know. When the sin come up, it strangles you, it's changed your view, and you said, God, you're so evil, nothing is allowed, and you have to do more and more. The, the interesting thing is, a snake strangles you never if you inhale. Oh. It's more tight if you exhale. Oh if you exhale, you relax, it's more tighter. More tighter. Every time when you relax, it's tighter. What, why I want to say it to you, why? Because... It's a sin around you. When you just relax and say, oh, sin, don't, not a problem. And just relax nearby by sin. Then the sin catch you and strangles you and kill you every time when you exhale and just relax. My God, my God, my God. <clears throat> and then God is with you. He will take the snake and kick them up. But you know, when we see in the Bible, when Jesus is on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why you have forsaken me? Every time in the Bible, he say, 100, 120 times, he say, my father, my father, my father. But in the cross, when he has sinned, then he just say, God. And if Jesus is in a resurrection, he's he's wake up from the death, what he say? He said, my father again, he, he killed the sin, you know? Yes. He kicked it away. Oh, sh or what do you say? <laughs> America. <laughs> no, this is what I learned here. <laughs> Never in your life speak with the sin. Never speak with the snake. Never in your whole life. The worst, worst thing what you can do is speak with the snake. If you have sin in your life, don't speak with this. Maybe this will shock you right now, but sometimes I use curse words. <laughs> Tim, Tim, Tim is, you don't know that. No, it's very shocking, you know. <laughs> but I, you can't believe it, but I have in my mobile phone or my cell phone, I always say it. In my calendar, every morning, wake, it's wake up, pray that you're shut up. 
And I pray every day, please help me with my words. <laughs> I'm so much better uh, than five years ago, but I think if I grow up in this same amount of time, then I need just 10,000 years, I'm good. <laughs> but what I learn is, I never speak to myself about the problem. I just speak with God about this problem. Yeah. And this is why you don't speak with the sin at all. You know what I have? My problem is I don't trust people so much. So many times I don't trust them and I think, okay, maybe they think this, maybe they think this. Stop it! Speak with God about the people. We have a kind of saying in Germany, if your children are small, you speak with your children about God. But if your children are big and, and a human being, great one, then you speak with God about your children. And this is what I want to say to you. Never speak with the snake. Never. Every time with him. It's change your focus. This is why I, I said, when we pray, we don't say, God, do this. God, do this. God, do this. God, change my thoughts. Change my mind. I want to be like you. I don't want to have a snake. Change me. Change me. My only prayer every day, please, God, change me. <laughs> what I learned is, some, maybe you guys, you know this. If I see a very beautiful woman, I saw her and sometimes I think, nice. <laughs> but I started this, I started this, I learned from it that this is a sin. It's grow up. Sometimes when I'm at home, I finger it. I think, oh. And what I do right now is I start to praise him. I say, thank you for the creation. Thank you, Jesus, that you created this beautiful woman. And I change my focus right now. I look to him. I would never fight against the sin. Never. I don't touch the sin. Jesus do it. He is it who changed the sin. And he changed everything. What I want to say is, sin changes the point of view to God. It distance you from God. And if you are with Jesus Christ, he brings you back. He brings you back. I hate it when people in the church come up and say, I prayed so much time, I give my tithing, I spend this, I work so much, but God, don't do what I want. I said, are you serious? Do you read even the Bible? It's not about you. Say to your neighbor, it's not about you. Now believe it. If you're in Jesus Christ, it's changed you, he cast the sin out, all the snakes, all the thoughts, and you don't have sin anymore, and the sin don't have you. It's not about your opinion or about your feelings. It's about him. Yeah. I learned something in this week. On Thursday, Tim picked me up before, in the morning, like, what was, seven, eight? This was hor horrible. I have holiday. He steals just one day from my holiday for me. <laughs> and we drove south to Miami to pick up uh, two German guys and a puppy. <laughs> it was a long, hard trip, but we have two times Wendy's. It's a blessing. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> and we, we, um, we, we had all the, all the papers uh, works in Miami, and I don't speak Spanish at all. This was crazy in Miami. <laughs> and then we drove back. It was at midnight. And Tim brought this dog to Kindle, and Kindle was so happy. She cried, and everything was just great. I thought, I thought it's worth it for the whole day to, to drive the trip. But the next day, on Friday morning at 5, God wakes me up. Sometimes in the morning, he wakes me up because in the morning, in the morning I'm so dead, I can't fight against him. <laughs> then I just listen. <laughs> and he said to me, what did you learn from this girl? I say, I'm so happy that I every posted everything by Instagram. Tim is every time against it, but I post it anyways. I'm like a, so a son, cl small boy. We have one boy, but he's not so small, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I was in Kobe's bed, and I know God can speak in all the dirty places. <laughs> you know, and... And he asked me, what, 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 did she, what, did you, what did you saw? And I watched the story four times, five times. And then I get it. This young lady, she felt on her, 
on her knees to his father, hugged him and just said, thank you, father. Thank you. Just one word. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Nothing else. Oh and one, it changed my mind. It blowed my mind up, you know, because one day when I'm in the heaven, I have no questions. I have nothing what I want to have from him. I just say, Thank you that you changed my life, that you rescued me, that I have no snakes anymore in my life, that I'm with you the whole time, and I'm back to the paradise with you. Yeah. And this is what, what the Bible wants to say when they speak about sin and snakes. Please, never in your life speak with snakes. Every time with God. If you have sin in your life, speak with God. You know, I, in the last four, five years, I had a, in the last four years, I had the hardest time in my life with my marriage, with my church. It was just, with the corona crisis, it was just a mess. And I was at a point that I want to kill myself. I was in my garage. I, did, I all had a, a string in my hand. It was so horrible. And I understand the snake is here. And I discussed and negotiated with myself. You can't handle it anymore. The church is bad. The marriage is bad. Your friends is bad. Stop it. Just kill yourself. And the voice of God comes in the hardest time. In the hardest time in your life. When everything is full of snakes. And they strangle you. And they bite you with poison. In this moment, God shows up. Every time he shows up. And then he said to me, I need you. Don't do it. Mm. And I can, to say, I can say to you, you can change your thoughts with him alone. Mm. Can I have let's, the last topic? God can take your sinful life and change it to be, become a blessed life. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, from, I'm born in Kazakhstan. We come, we come to, to Germany. We don't speak German at all. Nothing. For a poor country, poor people, less education. Then God take us and used us in Germany. We built church, a church in Germany, North, North Germany. It's a very dry land. But people gave their life to Jesus. Yeah. And if God can use a guy from Russia that he worked in Germany, then he can use you. Yes. Amen. Please never speak with the snake. Every time when you have a snake in your life, just kick it, say, America, and speak <laughs> with him. <laughs> I want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here right now. Thank you that you changed us. And thank you that we don't have sin anymore. I'm so happy that you die for us on the cross. And God shows me right now, let, let us eyes be closed. God shows me right now that we have people here that are full of snakes. And the snakes turn the meaning, the opportunity from God. That you have a wrong picture from God. That you say, he have to do, he have to do this, and you want this, and you want this. And today, God will change it. Keep your eyes closed and raise your arm. I will, I will pray for, from, from the stage for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus, you see all the hands. And I, I beg you, please cast out all the snakes of their life. And Jesus showed me right now that the snakes run away from you. They never come back. Th change the thoughts, Jesus Christ. And please fulfill the people with the Holy Spirit and change their life. Yes. I, be I believe that you do it right now in Jesus' name. Jesus, thank you for this church. And thank you for, for the body of Christ here in Orlando. I beg you that you change our thoughts and we never speak with snakes at all in our lives. Amen. One of the things I love to do is learn from people around the world. As we've been talking the last few weeks and even the last few days, you know, he, he just said, hey, have you ever seen this in Genesis 3? That it's always Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, until the, the enemy shows up. And then he removes that from the conversation. 
Because it's that word Lord that reminds us that we are to surrender to the creator. And if you can take away that surrender piece, then it can change your view of who you really think God is supposed to be for you. So that's going to be good stuff. And for some of you, that is how you spend your relationship with my Lord God. You take the surrender out. He's not really Lord over your life. He's not the creator we're introduced to in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. He's the one that we are hearing spoken about in Genesis 3. And taking this adventure with us means that you are going to step through the story of God and God is going to reveal himself consistently within his story to you to remind you, oh, I'm not just a God, I am the God, the only God. There is only one God, only one creator, only one king, only one Lord. And you, by the way, are not it. And if you remove me, then you get bit by the poison. And inevitably, you end back up in chaos and emptiness and void, the very thing God created out of. And I love the, just the thought of, for many of us, don't speak with the snake. I think you spoke about the German church enough today and its problems. In the American church, we think we can have conversations with the snake daily. We play with sin way too often. As a matter of fact, there are too many of us right now living in sin and thinking we're in relationship with God. And therefore, when you say, oh, why isn't God blessing me? Because God cannot shine his face upon that place where you are or what you're doing, or what you're participating in, what you're watching, who you're dating, what's happening in your relationship. And to really walk in the adventure of God, the story of God, as he said, is to fall to your knees and remind yourself, he is Lord God. And my only response is thank you. Thank you for all you've given, for all you've done, for rescuing me, for protecting me and keeping me from the snake. Because within the story, he says, there's one to come. Because there's always a shadow of the Messiah in every part of God's story. Because he was there at the beginning. And he says he will stomp the serpent's head. He doesn't speak with them. He stomps them. And some of you today need to be reminded of that. That's the power of the God that we serve. And so I'd invite you to stand this morning. And if you need someone to pray with, I'm going to ask pastors and elders, if you're in this service, any life group leaders, if you would come down front. As we just spend a few moments just closing out this service in worship, then we'll give you a few announcements. Some of you are not supposed to leave this place. You know why? Because you're still playing with sin. You're thinking, well, if I don't confess it and I, and I don't leave it here, no one will know about it. As Johanna said, we've all got snakes in our life. We've all got things to confess. The first thing we do is we repent. We repent and we say, God, I'm on the wrong path and I want to be on the path that you need me to be on so that I can experience your story, this never-ending story, the greatest story you have for me to trust you with. And so there are people to pray with you. People down here, all first service, all over this place, just praying. And so I invite you, I invite you to come as we continue to worship.
enjoy starting this year with you. I think that what God is going to do in 2023 is going to be something like we've never, ever seen or experienced before. Because we're serious. As Johanna said, it's not about us. It's just not. It's about him. We're putting all of our focus there in his story and letting it change your story. Just so that you know, as you came in uh, out in the lobby, our our binders have arrived. Um, Inside of there is a place for your inserts. Uh, We are selling them. We just, it's just the cost. It's a cost for the binder to print it and then all the inserts for all year. Because the goal is that by time we're walking through uh, this story of God together at the end of the year, you'll have a full binder full of everything you learned and discovered with us and you can take with us. And so all throughout the year, we'll be giving you new inserts to stick inside of it. And so you can purchase that on the way out. Just so that you know, in two weeks, we celebrate 13 years as a church. It is a story only God could have written. He gets all the glory for it. Uh, We get none of it. I get none of it. Uh, On this day is a great day to invite friends and co-workers and family to hear some pieces of the story of Genesis and what God has been doing here for 13 years. And so if they're looking for a church, looking at it back in church, maybe they lost trust in a church. You're like, listen, just come. Come give it a chance. Come give it a try with me. We'll be celebrating on campus that day. Um, One of the ways we'll be celebrating is through child dedications and baptism. And so if you have a child you've been wanting to dedicate, if you've been wanting to get baptized and you haven't been able to since we had our beach baptism, um, we are, we'll do it in-house. We want you to go online, register so that you can be baptized. Uh, you can invite your friends and family to come celebrate, be a part of that with us uh, and so forth. And then we'll be giving information about life groups, ministries, a lot of things happening all throughout this year. Um, listen, would you just give a hand to Johannes today for being here? He's so nervous this morning. I said, how do you feel? He said, I want to throw up. I said, really? I said, really? It's because it's all the Wendy's you've been eating all week long. Like, like, I need to re- confess to God this week because I haven't been at Chick-fil-A like I should, and I need that back in my life. But, you know, um, so he's been with me since Tuesday. He'll be here a few more days before he goes back. The beauty is that in September, uh, here in the next few weeks, we'll have details of a trip that will be taken um, because of the partnership and, and, and the things that God is doing for some of you to come with us to meet their church. Many of them were watching online. They're six hours ahead of us because they're so excited to have Johannes here preaching and being with us. You'll get to go meet them. And uh, together, we'll be starting brand new churches all throughout Germany. And so this story is so much bigger than us, so much bigger than us. This week, as you leave, as you leave, every day you wake up, Remember, he is the Lord, your God. No matter what the enemy says, the Lord, your God, that you surrender to always. And the very moment you hear the whispers of the serpent, as you heard today, do not speak to the snake. You speak to the creator. Grace and peace. May God be with you.